Hey, sports fans, we're back, and today we're here to take a look at Nick and Nate Montana, the sons of one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, Joe Montana, to see how their respective sports careers panned out and to see if they were chips off the old Hall of Fame dad's block. When Joe Montana retired, he was considered the best QB to ever play the game. A four-time Super Bowl winner, a three-time Super Bowl MVP, a two-time league MVP, and a selection to the NFL 100th anniversary all-time team. Between the years of 1979 to 1994, Joe Montana managed to redefine the bar for statistical and team success that fans and coaches expected out of a quarterback. It even came to a point where Joe Montana made being clutch so easy that as long as the ball was in his hands with any time on the clock, the team he was leading was expected to win. Before we get into Joe's sons to see how their football journeys are shaping out, do me a favor and click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on this channel. All done? All right, on to our video. Whether you've seen Joe Montana play or have merely just heard of the greatness of Joe and his Super Bowl glory days with the 49ers of a couple decades ago, the takeaway should be that before a little guy named Tom Brady came along and started collecting Super Bowl rings like Thanos, Joe was the guy. Matter of fact, before Brady, each and every quarterback debate began and ended with Joe and his unmatched Super Bowl success. A perfect 4-0 on the game's biggest stage, and not only was he perfect on the big stage, he was the type of common collected that even made other teammates be in awe of his coolness in nervy situations. Like the final drive of a Super Bowl when the rest of the team is on pins and needles with the game on the line, and Joe is pointing out that actor John Candy is in the stands. I guess when you're calm enough to be celebrity hunting while your team is vying for a Lombardi trophy, that's why you get the name Cool Joe. As cool as Joe may have been, his division and conference rivals were anything but cool about his 10 division titles in 14 seasons. If you take off the two years Joe missed with injuries, that's 10 in 12 seasons, a level of success virtually unheard of in Joe's days and was pretty much unthinkable until Joe did it. I mean, now it's not as crazy given what Tom's done, but let's not digress. Joe was the standard and to some, despite all of Tom's success, still is. And now that we understand how great their dad really was, let's take a look at what Nick and Nate have done in their football careers to see how they've measured up. First up for the Montana boys, we have the eldest, Nate. Nate Montana attended Cardinal Newman High School in Santa Rosa, California before transferring to one of the nation's most dominant high school sports programs, De La Salle, for his junior and senior seasons. Standing at 6 foot 4 tall and weighing around 215 pounds, Nate Montana has the size he hoped for in an NFL quarterback. Those who watched Montana in practices said that he certainly looked the part, but unfortunately for Nate, it wouldn't translate. At De La Salle, Nate would serve as the third string quarterback even though his last name was Montana, which was fine with him because by all accounts, Nate wanted to get by on his play and not the name on the back of his jersey. When colleges weren't showing interest in Nate, who wasn't able to generate much buzz due to his lack of playing time, the eldest Montana son was forced to try and walk on at the last place he expected to find himself, his dad's alma mater of Notre Dame. Nate Montana was able to walk onto the Fighting Irish but was relegated for fourth on the depth chart. Nate had hoped to work his way up the depth chart and earn a scholarship during his sophomore year, but after being unable to climb his way up the playing ladder, he decided to transfer to a JUCO. After trying out for Mount SAC's football program and not being able to secure a starting gig, Nate enrolled at Pasadena City College as a redshirt freshman. Following a stint at Pasadena City College, Nate re-enrolled at Notre Dame the following spring, but was still only third on the depth chart. With his work cut out for him, Montana worked his tail off and was said to be climbing the depth chart and working his way towards consistent playing time when his dreams of starting for the Fighting Irish would be sacked after an off-field incident, which put Montana's name in the headlines, but not for the reasons he'd hoped. Nate, along with eight other Notre Dame football players, was arrested at a party where a number of people were busted for underage drinking. The unfavorable headlines would slow any momentum Nate had with getting in the coach's good graces, and he'd only get to appear in three games and attempt 18 passes for 116 yards. Seeking another fresh start and an opportunity to start, Nate Montana would take his talents to Montana of all places. At the University of Montana, and with the hopes of a new destination bringing a new outcome, Nate Montana was determined to establish himself as the team's QB1 and finally show the collegiate world and nation that he was not just a player good enough to play in college, but one capable of playing at the next level. By all accounts, Montana impressed coaches and staff during the spring and by fall was in play to be the team's starting quarterback until, like some Shakespearean tragedy, disaster would strike again after Nate was stopped at 3 a.m. for drinking and driving. After fumbling his driver's license when asked to show it to law enforcement and refusing a breathalyzer, but smelling of alcohol, Nate would again find himself in trouble with the law. The charge was later reduced to reckless driving, but even though nobody was harmed by the incident and it wasn't subject to school discipline, Nate would never be handed the starting gig and would end up only tossing 42 passes that season. 
With one year of eligibility left and still hoping to get a shot at a starting quarterback job, Nate, now a fifth-year senior, decided it would be time to test the transfer waters again. And this time he would take his talents to West Virginia Wesleyan, a D2 school with a departing senior at quarterback. Like the previous season, Nate prepared like he had never prepared before and impressed coaches. Claiming he'd do everything in his power to win the starting job, Nate worked harder than he'd ever worked and secured the QB1 gig. With the job finally his, Montana played admirably with a 51.6 completion percentage, nearly 2,500 passing yards with 19 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. Montana was only able to lead the Bobcats to a 3-8 record and didn't receive much interest from pro scouts or coaches, but Nate, who had one of the more interesting college sports roads, would still get a couple more shots to prove himself. At the Super Regional Combine the following spring, there was buzz in the air like you were not used to seeing at a regional combine, or any combine for that matter, when it was said that the son of the Niner great Joe Montana would be in attendance. Considered a long shot by NFL.com analyst Bucky Brooks due to his lack of arm strength, Montana was viewed as one of the better prospects in attendance even though he was considered the most intriguing one because he was a Montana. While Nate Montana was considered a gifted passer for his touch accuracy, he didn't possess the arm strength or fundamentals to zip the ball into tighter windows or throw players open. On the other hand, NFL analyst Gil Brandt thought that he had seen enough from Montana and even claimed his measurables would be enough for a team to at least give him a camp invite. Brandt would be right and soon after the Super Bowl Regional Combine, who would come calling but who else? The San Francisco 49ers. Montana was set to compete at the 49ers local pro day and the buzz that his mere attendance generated was large enough that you would have thought Joe himself was lacing them up again. Unfortunately for Nate, his fairy tale would end with this workout which was considered an average one by those in attendance. Last but not least for the Montana boys, we have Nick. The younger of the two Montana boys attended Oak Christian High School in Westlake Village, California and was a blue chip prospect. Like his father Joe and his older brother Nate, Nick played quarterback and decided to follow in his dad's footsteps in hopes of carrying on the Montana football name. Nick was an Under Armour All-American and listed as a four-star recruit after lighting up high school athletics for two years and captivating the local media. After Nick's stellar two years at Oak Christian starting quarterback, the 6'1", 190-pound Montana was said to be a traditional pocket passer with the potential to be even better than his father with his only real weakness being listed as his size, which scouts still believed he could improve as he was only 18 years old. After being recruited by his father's alma mater, Notre Dame, and other powerhouses like Ohio State and LSU, Nick decided to attend the University of Washington because of quarterback guru Steve Sarkeesian, to whom he planned on being groomed under and molded into a successful college talent like Sarkeesian did for Carson Palmer and Matt Leinart. After arriving at the University of Washington, Montana didn't have the type of success he'd hoped for and was redshirted during his first season and only attempted 42 passes his second season, which included only one start. In just two years, Nick Montana, the son of one of the greatest ever play quarterback, who'd gone into college with a buzz and had many thinking he'd be one of college and pro football's greatest sports stories, was relegated to cleanup duty. Many wondered if Montana had made the right choice by spurning Notre Dame, Ohio State, and LSU for Washington, and now, Nick himself was beginning to wonder. Before his third college season and still seeking a starting opportunity, Nick decided to transfer to Mount San Antonio College. At Mount San Antonio College, a community college in Walnut, California, Montana was giving the starting gig and balled out. His 4,600 passing yards and 36 touchdowns to only 11 interceptions impressed. Nick in his third year of school finally got to showcase his abilities that scouts saw in high school. Following his success, Nick decided it was time for the bigger stage and transferred to Tulane. At Tulane, Nick would get his shot, but in his first season, he'd only win 5 of 11 games with a completion percentage of 53% and just over 1,700 yards passing and 14 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. During his final year, Nick would lose the starting job and only appear in four games, three of which were losses. Following his time at Tulane, Nick would end his pursuit of playing in the pros and, like his brother Nate, never throw an NFL pass. While Nick and Nate Montana both fell short of their NFL dreams, it wasn't for a lack of trying. Nick, the blue chip recruit, and Nate, the walk-on, may not have played in the NFL, but the consensus on the Montana boys were that they were talented and had the pieces fallen into place for them as far as opportunity in the right program, at least one of them, if not both, could have made it into the league. With as many transfers as both of Joe's sons made, it also leaves us to wonder what would have happened if Nick chose a different program to start his career, or remained patient in his college path, or had Nate remained patient and stayed at Notre Dame, would the stars would have aligned differently? There's even a scenario where both sons would have played in Notre Dame. While it's fun to talk about, unfortunately, we will never know. All right, sports fans, that's it for our time on the sons of Joe Montana and their respective football careers. Let us know what you think about the Montana Suns and their playing days by dropping us a comment. And as always, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, do us a favor and click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on this channel and more videos just like this. Until next time, sports fans.